Good evening, and welcome to my How Healthy Are You weekly conference call. My name is Dr. Thomas Brewer. I'm a PhD chemist. And for today's call, I'm going to focus on something that everyone is concerned about, and there's pretty much no concern about anything else in the news, and that is the coronavirus COVID-19. So I'm going to talk about some information that is not on the Internet and is not, ex, uh, well, it, it's not covered by the news media. And uh, all of us are aware of so much information about this virus, but this information is not shared. So the first thing I wanted to remind people is that coronavirus is a classification of viruses. I first mentioned uh, coronavirus on January 13th in my newsletter, and I want to read uh, what I wrote. It was, it was in the uh, introduction section. So on January 13th, I wrote, it was just reported that a new coronavirus has shown human-to-human -human transmission in China and other countries. Coronavirus is a family of viruses that causes infections ranging from colds and pneumonia to SARS. The World Health Organization is now preparing for a wider outbreak. Boy, did that turn out. Uh, my advice is to continue taking three Steromax per day about 30 minutes before your first meal of the day. Your only defense from this and other viruses is your immune system white blood cell. So, again, that's what I had mentioned uh, back in January. And here we are, and uh, the whole issue has escalated very quickly. What used to take a week is, is taking a day in escalation, what used to take a week in escal uh, or a month in escalation is taking a week. Things are moving very fast. And so I wanted to give my listeners my take on what's going on. So the first thing is viruses are technically not alive. So when someone mentions that something kills the virus, well, first, they don't know viruses aren't alive. That, that's already a problem. But what they mean is something is killing the cells that make up the virus. So the way viruses are destroyed, so I'll use the word destroyed instead of killed, um, is to kill the cells that make up the virus. So what does that is our immune system white blood cells and the other thing that will do that are, are certain things like colloidal silver. Uh, anything that's antiviral will do that. But it's much harder to destroy a virus than it is to kill a bacteria because a bacteria can be killed. They're alive. Uh, viruses need a host, and then the whole entity takes on essentially a, a life form. So I also mentioned the coronavirus in the February 3rd newsletter, and boy, just things just keep escalating and escalating. So the first thing I wanted to mention is to expect a decrease in this escalation once the weather warms. So the, most of the country is still in fairly cool weather, and once the w weather warms, uh, this coronavirus COVID-19, as well as all the other viruses and influenza flu-type viruses, you're going to see all of that diminish. But right now, there's a lot of hysteria and hype going on. Now, the U.S. has not peaked yet in this uh, viral infection, but China has peaked. So since China has peaked, and they've had it a few months, you can expect us to peak in probably less time uh, due to all the precautions, and we're closer to spring. Uh, China, this, a lot of this started in November and December in China, so 
um, due to their precautions, they peaked, but um, we'll have the benefit of the warmer weather. So the thing about this virus is that it is contagious when you don't know you're sick. And things like Ebola and SARS, people would know they're sick very quickly and uh, would avoid human contact. But this virus is, is as if it's designed to infect people when the person infecting you doesn't even know they are sick. Uh, and that's what makes it uh, a problem. But as far as the kill rate, it, it's not as bad as what's being told in the news media, what's being conveyed. The normal flu or influenza kills one-tenth of one percent of the population. Now, that's still a lot of people, a tenth of a percent of the people that, that uh, obtain or get the flu uh, die. But nobody cares about that. No, nobody cares about those numbers. Those numbers have been around for decades. Um, now, this virus has a bigger kill rate. It's still small, but it, it's a bigger number. So nobody cared about a tenth of a percent. In the end, this one's going to be around 0.5% of anyone who contracts it. So the news media will say, well, that's five times larger. And there are numbers that say it will be 1%, but these are, are skewed numbers. And then they can say, well, this is 10 times the kill rate, uh, 10 times the death of normal flu. It's still a small number because it's going to end up five, and it'll be 0.5%. But the media has us really running around scared. If the flu, the standard flu, had a higher kill rate, again, nobody would care. Uh, and now we're forced to be cognizant of our surroundings and of people and of uh, viruses. And so from this point forward, people are going to keep their hands clean and they're going to not go out in public when they're sick. And so that's a good thing. That, that's a, an advantage uh, that people are going to, be a little more concerned about their health and their ability to transmit viruses. So uh, most people don't even get the flu each year. Now, the news media is not talking about your immune system. They're saying that everyone's going to get this coronavirus um, designation COVID-19 um, as if everyone gets it if they're exposed. Well, that's not true for, for the regular flu. They're making it seem like you're going to get the regular flu, influenza, if you don't get a flu shot because we have a vaccine. But that, that, it doesn't work that way. I didn't get the flu and I don't get the flu shot. Um, it's all about your white blood cells. And if your immune system is strong and active, you can fight off any virus. And if it isn't strong and active, you can potentially succumb to any virus. So I can see little viruses in the microscope. So this, uh, this version of coronavirus is a half a micron, 0 0.5 micrometers. And uh, a red blood cell, which we see all the time in the microscope, are 6 to 8 microns. So this is about 1 14th the size of a red blood cell, still something we can see under the microscope. It's, it's ballpark, uh, ab about a tenth of the size of a red cell. And, and that still visible. It's, in fact, these viruses are larger, way larger than the little pieces of fat that I show people in the blood called chylus. So when I'll say, oh, there's some fat in, in your plasma, the viruses are, are way larger than that. So I get that question, can you see if I have this virus? Yes, I can see if you have a virus in your blood. Um, 
So keep your white blood cells strong and active. The way we suggest doing that is to take your Steromax. The, that will make your white blood cells uh, big and active, but you may not have time to improve your white blood cell activity. So the other way to protect yourself immediately is to utilize colloidal silver in a very clever way. I am going to write about that in the newsletter. So that newsletter will be going out tomorrow and then the, uh, the recording of this conference call will go with the newsletter. So between the newsletter and the conference call information, you'll really have everything you need to fight this virus. So the number of, uh, like I said, the number of people dying um, is, is being told to be 1% and higher and 2% and higher. And I don't want you to believe those numbers because that's not really what's going on. They sample a small population and they can get the death rates to be higher than a standard population. If you look in the U.S., very few people, relatively speaking, have this virus relative to common influenza and even smaller number dying. There are people reporting uh, what happened to them when they contracted this coronavirus, COVID-19, and, uh, and, and they, they survived. Um, they didn't have any immune or, or any uh, special shot or, or flu shot. There was no vaccine for them. They, they just survived because their immune system was good, uh, weak enough for them to contract, the uh, virus, but strong enough to uh, knock it out. Due to all the sequestering we're doing now, um, you'll see the standard flu rates drop like crazy, uh, including this coronavirus, um, due to all the work we're doing and, and minimizing human contact. Uh, this will pass. Um, but it is going to get painful. It's going to get worse until it gets better. Um, it almost seems like the news media wants a lot of hysteria over this. And instead of reporting how somebody had the virus and uh, explained it wasn't so bad and, and, and they survived just fine, uh, all we hear about is when an older person passes away um, or if a child passes away, and, and we have no idea if they were sick anyway. Uh, so a lot of information is still being kept from us so that we can worry and empty the store shelves of food. Um, there's plenty of people working. Uh, our supply chain is full of employees to stock shelves. It's not like everybody in the store is sick because essentially hardly anyone is sick. And if they're out of food today, they'll have food um, tomorrow because the, the trucks are rolling. Um, and so the system still works, but we're going to lose some freedoms to go to the movies and to go out to restaurants and for children to go to school. Um, and this should end uh, quickly, especially when people start getting fed up with the loss of their right to move and, and, and to move around in society, um, people might say, I've had enough of this. But uh, I expect a lot of that to happen once it gets warmer. So that's what I had about the, this coronavirus, COVID-19. It seems to be that's all anyone is talking about. There's nothing else to talk about in the news that this is it. So there was a question, though, about the circulatory system that I mentioned I was going to talk about. And this is really good information. Um, so in general, our circulatory system is simply our heart, our blood vessels, and the blood that uh, courses through our blood vessels, uh, which ties in really well with me looking at blood under a microscope. But the question 
wasn't about the circulatory system, it was more about varicose veins, and that's where it gets a little more interesting. So a varicose vein is caused from faulty valves in the vein that push the blood through uh, from our heart to our extremities and organs. And when these valves are faulty, the blood pools. Now, 23% of adults, so let's say roughly a fourth of adults, have some sort of varicose vein issue. So this is common. The odds of uh, people listening to this call are really high that a lot of you have varicose veins. Now, the cause is just from some event that causes excess pressure on our veins. Pregnancy causes that, and that's why it's common with uh, young mothers. Obesity causes that, just due to the pressure of the fat, the visceral and the, uh, yeah, the visceral fat that's pushing on our organs. And uh, just standing for long periods uh, puts strain on our veins, and so we end up with uh, potentially getting a varicose vein. The solution is so easy, though, for varicose veins. It's simply exercise. All you need to do is move, and you'll be able to get your valves working better and get the blood flowing so it doesn't pool. The problem with varicose veins is you don't want it to progress until you form a blood clot. That's, that's a problem. We don't want blood clot because then you can have strokes. Now, enzymes are a great way to prevent blood clots uh, and keeps the blood nice and clean so that when you exercise, the, the blood can flow. So I encourage people with uh, varicose veins to, to take your enzymes with your meals and to exercise. The other thing to do is to eat plant-based foods and back to the plant-based foods, I, I've said it over and over, you definitely want to eat a lot of plant-based foods. You don't have to eat only plant-based foods, but you want to include them in your diet. Some people think that massage will get rid of varicose veins since exercise helps, but massage will get rid of a lot of the pain, but it will not fix a varicose vein. Your, your best bet is to exercise. Supplement-wise, in addition to the enzymes, is the Aloace Max. So Aloace Max is a cell regenerator, and the whole point is to get these faulty valves uh, and the cells that make up these faulty valves in our veins to regenerate. So that's where the Aloace Max comes in. Aloace Max is also great for anyone with diabetes because it regulates blood sugar, and it's good for anyone with arthritis. For the same reason it's good for someone with varicose veins, it's a cell regenerator, so you get to help regenerate the uh, damaged cells in bones and tendons and ligaments due to arthritis. So, But again, Aloace Max as a cell regenerator for varicose veins, that's, that's an excellent um, supplement to utilize. Now, I recorded this call live about an hour ago and then I noticed the recording stopped. Hmm. So I've noticed, okay, here we go. Uh, so I did this call um, without an audience. So this is more of a podcast call. Uh, so very important. Please call me or contact me in any way if you have questions on this. And uh, I'll be doing the next conference call next week. Okay. Good night, everybody.